Alrighty then, so last time we had talked about uh, lots of things. We covered all of the results there in the room. We had two trades we want to talk about specifically from one of our members. We had a double cross, double move. We went through on the win side, and we want to talk about uh, the ones where he, well, he got a little bit caught up, and I think we're going to learn a ton from this one. So let's uh, tear this one apart and digest it a bit. Let me kind of get used to which buttons I'm pressing here as we're shifting through all of our screens. Um, we'll be doing a lot more of this here starting July the 6th when we do our small account challenge against Warrior Trading himself, Ross Cameron versus Algo Box. Hope you guys are excited about that one. July the 6th, starting our first set of full recordings, starting with the smallest account size that we recommend. Ross Cameron's going to be starting with the smallest account size he recommends. And uh, we're just going to leave the results, um, you know, lay them out there and... You know, you guys watch, you guys decide if you want to trade his way, do it. If you want to trade our way, you know what to do. And of course, you can come and try it for free, download it, start learning it. Unlike Ross, where you got to go pay to play. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's get into it here. So, uh, RTY DCDM from today. So we briefly covered this one. The only critique I had from this one from the previous video. And again, if you didn't get the other video, there's a lot in that one. So you want to go check that one out. Um, the previous video right in front of this one. I'll leave the link in the description on this video to go back and see it But we had just covered this one from Colton who had put in the double cross double move and again my critiques The only thing we had was pushing out your targets get him in the proper location If you don't know about the double cross double move uh, head on over to our website vinnyemini.com and click in the very center link here at the top training library right here and The double cross double move again. You really want to go through all these but here is a double cross double move video right there and you can learn what we're talking about so if you don't understand what i mean by putting his targets in the proper location that video is the one to go and watch uh, for that one he ended up doing a great job of adding to his position with the green dot that showed up inside of the double cross so he goes from two contracts boom adds he's at four but again look at where he's got these targets scattered now again a lot of times that's actually good for other strategies but he's combining and mixing up his strategies on his targeting Make sure on the double cross double move, this is one to really capitalize on because when one of these hits, it hits real good, okay? And remember the stops are gonna go at the bottom of those crosses and I think he already knows that. But uh, again, there it went, boom, straight up there and all of his targets really should have been pulled off up here. And I'm fairly certain this moved and wiggled up here which would have filled in all of his targets even if he had kept them split but closer to where they should have been on the gold line, double cross double move, not taking multiple targets along the way. Now. One of the things Colton had asked about in this next series of slides, he said, Vinny, I have a question on this series of slides I'm about to present. I have struggled with knowing when to hold a trade through and when to exit. Well, again, that struggle, he's probably not alone. You probably also might have this. And that last one is an easy one, right? Double cross the move, why it's one of my favorites. Look, there's no question there, right? Let, let's like think about what I'm saying there. Is there really a question on when to hold on a double cross double move? No. In fact, double cross double move, if you're a person who's always struggling with that, look, I, one of the things is, then focus specifically on using a strategy and make it your main that targets your weakness, right? Or doesn't, you don't have to worry about your weakness, overcomes your weakness. So number one, that's my tip number one for that. Go in and do the double cross double move. That is an easy one and put it in the proper location. But let's talk about how you would know on on other trades, okay? We are most of the time on every other different type of trade that we have, I believe, let me think here for a second, unless I've got an exception. I don't know, I'm fairly certain every other one, we're looking for target one, target two, okay? Target one, target two, and the only thing that changes on that is which algo bar chart it comes off of. You guys got that? Which algo bar chart it comes off of. So what does that mean? Well, does it come off of this one, this one, or this one, okay? In his case, because he's got multiples, Although I've narrowed this down for some of you guys, even for myself, I've only got two now, right? So I'll make it real easy if you got a two. Now he's gonna have a little bit more of a problem because he has, he's using a lot more, okay? Again, he's got a larger screen, he's got more pixels, uh, pixel density on his resolution that he's using. So, you know, uh, speaking to you, um, Colton, if you want to reduce your workspace, if you're having a problem with this, okay, there's one thing that you could do is reduce your workspace to the more simplified version of having only two to select from. You'll have the high time frame, low time frame. I don't wanna say high, but you know what I'm saying? Like a, you're looking for a big, small, okay? Maybe a five and a two, right? If And again, switch this to the eights, right? And then basically eliminate two charts right there. 
right? One way. Another thing too is if it comes off the threes, now the benefit of having the threes, I'm gonna show you guys something. Uh, he had the double cross come in here on the threes. The disadvantage for me, who I have a simplified layout, what, am I gonna see this double cross? No, I'm not, okay? Because that double cross did not show up on the twos or the fives. You see, so he had an advantage having this one on his chart. So again, this is why I tell you guys, like I still would rather have more, okay? In our system, more is more. Uh, but what I'm doing here on these screens, it's usually for demonstration purposes more so. And you know, we, we do we do pretty well regardless. Um, you know, it's not, it's, it's part in hairs really at the end of the day. But yes, I would love to have had that trade right there on the threes, such an easy one now. But now he's talking about the harder ones. So right before we get into the harder ones, you notice that little wiggle that I said? Yeah, it was there. You see all that up there? He had plenty of time to exit all those contracts he had to the long side because there's a double cross double move. And look, this wiggled all kinds of ways up here at what would have been the gold line full exit up there. And he would have, instead of making that $700 that he had made, that would have been a full 1,000 um, that we looked at on his PL right there, right? Okay, so now let's go into the, tr the tricky parts. So he said, admittedly, this is a terrible signal to enter a trade. This was right after the DCDM, yes, which was great. So that was part of the reason. Yeah, I mean, he kind of got right in after it, which I think he was also saying that, well, he knows that we're at the gold line. And oftentimes I've said, hey, you can reverse off of that gold line. But again, that's a that's a target one play. This is not a, oh, full reversal after a DCDM gold line. No, this is a, if it punches into that gold line, I can take that for a target one being a 10 tick target back down the other direction if I've got any other signal at that location, which he did, he got the goal, he got the cross, okay? So that's good. So step one, he did a good thing here by trying to go ahead and take a swing at this. Although, I mean, it's not like a fantastic entry, okay? Cause he's going against several things. He's going against the Mac V, which is clearly, you know, when we said earlier on the previous video, uh, which we'll recant, recant right here, is in the histogram. What's the histogram doing right here? If you split it right in the middle, right here, you can see to the right, we're turning green, but to the left over here, we were red. Okay, so we have made the shift into green. He does have shorts favorable going with him as well. So I would say like this is, again, let's, it's a mixed bag here on this play, but hey, it's worth a shot. And that's what I always tell people like, look, sometimes it's worth a shot. Put your stop in the right location. Just don't go huge on it. And then know where your targets are. Pretty easy one on this one. Should be, he should be looking for target one, but I see he's leaving target one and two out here. Okay, so step one, part of the problem that I already see here is that he should already be thinking as soon as he gets into a trade that he knows is a little bit sus, right? A little bit suspect that he wants to go for target one. So he should be squeezing that other one up in there, trying to get it inside of target one. So part one, he's concerned about his entry and rightfully so, okay? Part two, um, see, this might be clear if I do full open here, because he's got super high resolution. Yeah, this will be better. Okay, so now um, second part, he, label go, I can't see his label. Uh, green dot appears on the eights and the wave. Now, so he's going short and he sees green dot coming in here on a king timing, green dot coming in here. So the two high time, two high time frames have a green. So he needs to be thinking about taking an exit here. And yes, that's a smart idea to be looking for the exits. Now he also added to his position here. I'm not sure if what he added on, okay. Maybe he just wanted to get bigger but he did add from two, he went to four on the short side play on this. But again, only critique I have is really actually his targets. I don't care if you add to position. Look, there's like, that's what that's what we do, right? That's our, that's our bread and butter, adding to positions that are going our direction. Great job, okay? But targeting, okay? I think you have a problem if I'm trying to identify for Colton and others, okay? This is a targeting problem. He had target problems on his double cross, double move, even though it was a winner, he could have made a bigger winner. And in this case, He's, you know, he's got his winner way out there, but it shouldn't be, right? He's kind of got the reverse here. Double cross, double move, he should have kept that out there. On this one, he should be squeezing this up, right? Makes sense. So right here, he's a little bit nerve wracked. Um, I believe he closes out um, at least part of this position. And the next screenshot, I love that he took screenshots all along the way. Again, it's very easy for us to help and give feedback. And then he also got another green dot showed up on the threes and that's when he exited. So smart. now. Remember he was up 700 from before. He looks like, again, it's a little bit fuzzy there. I believe he's up in the 800s at this point. Let me see if I can see what it is right here. Um, that's a six, so I'm not sure. Oh, so he might've lost a little bit 
Um, on a, as he exited, he must have had slippage. Um, on slippage on that, or maybe in was the second one. Not really sure on that one. So exited on the green dot, turned against him. Okay. Then I believe he re-entered in on that red dot. Yeah. So, okay. So he comes in and he throws back and now he reinitiates a position on a red dot. Okay. Uh, all right. No, no problem yet. Okay. We're starting to break through that green dot. I'm okay with that. He sees targets down here. So I'm going to go, Hey, that's okay. But you're really just taking a red dot at this point. Does everybody get that? Like it's literally just a red dot. So red dot by itself, maybe with shorts favorable. Okay, but I mean, Mac V is screaming green. Okay, Mac V is solid green. This is going green. And what have I told you guys? You're swinging against Mike Tyson. You're going against this. So he's got to really start to keep this super tight. Okay, and and uh, at his best case, this is probably still going to move up a little bit before it moves down. Just in general, you can just tell because of the angle that that's coming down at. Um, and let's see how this goes. So. He did. He starts getting in short, then he gets scared because he sees a blue dot. Yikes. So, I mean, now he's got dots showing up everywhere. He's got the blue dot coming in here. He had the green dot here. He had a green dot here. He had a green dot. I mean, he's got everything going against that original position of trying to go short, where these should have just been an exit, right? He should have just taken exits off of his original short off of the cross exiting on green no problem trying to reinitiate and keep going at it nah, that's very very dangerous because again you're going against mac v you are not going against mac v this is actually an okay play but he turns around now he tries to get long here he says smash the reversal button on the double dot ended up getting triple juked and screwed i'm pretty sure this ended not hitting the targets and i took another loss now i would have liked to see how this Reverse, because I have a feeling with that much power going in, green dot there, green dot there, green dot there, green dots here. This is probably came back down, but there's likely an up move somewhere here before it was going to make another tank down, which would have happened after a delta. And I don't see any delta signs telling me that, okay, there's big a big shift coming quite yet, but it likely would have come after a bit of a little up move like this. Fake everybody going to the highs one more time. Boom, you see a big volume spike of Delta coming in. It looks like this, okay? And then that's everybody getting flushed, trying to get to the long side from the retailers. And then, <laughs> all right, so again, I know I'm kind of giving you foresight and what, but that's what I'm trying to do is like tell you like how I'm looking at positions and when I'm thinking about them and filtering on those, okay? But this one's not really hard to filter on because you literally, I mean, everything is screaming green here, right? So on his last one, trying to get long on that, it's still not a problem. If he hadn't been trying to get short twice on that, he could have really concentrated on the entry on a long here. And so what if it stopped out, this is gonna be a very small stop out there and should be, you know, maybe a minus six ticks. Um, versus I'm not sure he didn't he didn't really say he just said afterwards he said I'm pretty sure this ended not hitting so he didn't get a screenshot at the end and he was probably unnerved right like when you take if you kind of get back and forth on that and then you take the hits you're going to be a little bit unnerved so I think he still ended up I believe Colton still ended the day in the positive um, but you know he ate into some of his original profits and he definitely could have been in the 1000s um, on that uh, Roger gave some good feedback here so I do want to kind of go through this he just pointed out, I didn't even realize what time of day. He said, don't take trades between 10, 10 and 10, 30. Oh, I almost missed that critique. You know what? That one right there solves all your problems, <laughs> right? Clean up that DCDM, be up on $1,000 a day and miss out on all of that garbage. Holy shnikes. I was like, man, well, that looked, that definitely looked tough. It's readable, but it's tough. And you know what? Everything saves you right there is that coffee time. Make sure you don't take a trade there like I, I have no if you're taking it in that sh in that area it's a gamble okay 20 minutes there where that whole shift comes that's a, that's what all that mess was that was the that was the juke and shook all right it was a nice shot right here but if this is at 10 30 i didn't even notice that on the chart but yes he's trading in the no go zone very good I think Roger, man, look at that. Roger crushing it. I didn't even pay attention to that. Well done. He also was making some critiques around OBOS um, that, you know, I had recently said you can pull OBOS. I think that Delta is actually more important. So if you want to put that in, that's great. Although I think he's got it on this highest, highest time frame on the wave, which definitely can help. I mean, once when you see that in the, you know, and I'm not a big overbought, oversold person, though it is included into the dot programming. 
so as one of the 15 factors that go into our fib dots so again you don't really have to have it you can save some space on your highest time frame chart there on the tide um, that was one critique that he put in using the F button at the top right to fix your charts and I saw the his counter to that was that he kind of likes it like that to be able to see more Eh, that one's literally it's kind of personal on that one you can take your pick but I think another thing that would have also you know gone to what Roger's saying if you had been bumped over a little bit farther you'd get more details on what's going on with the MACV as well Although too much MACV is also too much because if you're going too far back, I really don't care what's happening over here on the left-hand side, way over here on the histogram of the MACV, right? I still want to know about the most recent stuff, which is, you know, one of our rules saying recency is key right here. And we're clearly going green, right? As we said before, we were red right here and then we went green. So he should be thinking green, right? That's it. Like that's all the trade side that he should be looking at unless he's taking his you know life into his own hands, which he did as he was taking those shorts okay so great analysis there on that one i think there's a lot to learn inside of that one i want to point out this one as well so big mini fridge had put in this uh beautiful j hook analysis asking for some feedback around this one um casey is a j hook expert and again j hook is not a very it's not a simple one again i recommend people trade the j hook if you've got a padded account you got a larger account this is not for folks starting out with your small smaller accounts okay you need to build you built your cushion and be way past your eight thousand dollar initial account size if you're going to be trading j hook that's my advice to you okay now if you're going to use the j hook with confluence you're going to take a headshot and it's got a j hook awesome that's the way i always encourage you guys to do it but you wanted to have some questions on this he is new okay and i don't even think he has he may i'm sure he's gone through the standard j hook video okay so i posted the advanced level j hook video which i'll post that in the description down below as well um, but you guys want to go watch this one because i'm going to talk about how we approach target one in a case like this one because he had a very good point that Hey, this J hook, I mean, it went, boom, it went target one, it went target two, it went target three. How he wants to ride that. Like, how could I have taken this trade? Because it did not get into the ideal entry zone, which are these two green lines right here, which is the standard J hook, right? You see the little small text right there and labeling here in where the perfect J hook entry should be inside in between these two green lines, right? And then you've got your target one, target two, and target three laid out for you with our J hook algo. But. This one didn't even get up there at all, but he's like, dude, could I have taken this at all? So the answer is yes, after you see how it approaches target one, okay? So if you go watch the advanced level video, I'm not gonna go into full detail on that here tonight, but if you wanna know the details of what I'm talking about and watch it in detail, this is how you approach target one. This is a scenario where it went straight to target one. So very simple rule that you learned from that video is if we go straight to target one, then target two and target three is highly likely. Right. So in that case, you can look to go, okay, we crashed right through there. I can dip my toe in the water right there. You got a cross entry on it on a break on target one and you can target two and target three for your runner. And on top of that, you get a double cross right here. Uh, yeah. So you got two ways to do this. You get in first short right here. I'll do a red dot for that short off the cross right past the break of target one to go take off some right here. Now again, that doesn't look like very much space, but let's look at the real numbers here. That is a... That's a 35 drop down to a down to a 30. It's really only it's really only 10 ticks there to target one and then to target two. So it's you know it's a 20 ticker right there. But hey, you know that's a good good set of 20 ticks. Um, the toughest part is on that double cross. If you're going to be entering into this, you have to measure you know your double cross double move is starting from here to here. So your target is here to here. Okay. So again, these are, these are still smaller. looks like, you know, 10 ticker targets on this, but the total for that could be, you could collect around 20 ticks on that play for a, if you're reading the J hook, if you're a J hook expert and you understand that, Oh, cool. We went, did question one, did we go straight to target one? Oh, cool. Let's have some fun. Let's drop it all the way down into target two and three. Now there's several ways. I don't want to just haphazardly enter in. Like for instance, if there was no cross right here, that means that we're getting algos kicking in here then I don't, I don't want to necessarily, I don't, well, not even necessarily, I don't want to take this. I'm not just taking a break of target one. I need an entry. Oftentimes that will be a red dot coming in here, okay, which would have been awesome, you know, easy to read if there was a red dot there, um, or a PRZ cross, any other thing to go, okay, boom, now I can target target two and or target three 
And then the secondary to target three was obviously the double cross here. And now that's in this situation. Would you always get that? No. So don't just blindly go, okay, oh, Vinny said if it went to target one, target two and target three is likely. So I'm just going to, you know, target, target three. No. Get entries first, right? Very simple. No, the idea and the concept is that if we get there, that we're likely to get to target one and target two, not guaranteed. And then take some entries. That way you know exactly where your stops are. That way your profit factors are all aligned and you hit the wins. All right. And I think this was Casey reviewing again, same trade we had gone through in the previous video. So I won't go through that one in this one, go back to the previous video to go and check out that one. And one of our members, uh, it's actually not a member, a brand new person here had asked about, hey, can I get the, the next steps PDF? And let's, let's show what that is. If you guys haven't seen this and installed our system yet, um, if you're wondering what you're going to learn in our program and how we do what we do, again, I got this consolidated into a one pager here. Again, it looks like a whole lot of stuff here, but believe it or not, this still has less dials than all the little buttons in your car. Okay, so if you can if you can drive a car and learn the buttons that are in your vehicle, then uh, I assure you, you can learn these. And a lot of these things work together, but if you're wondering like what are the things that you need to learn in order to trade our system, these are the strategy sets and the concepts that I teach to you guys. And of course, you know, how to get in and go to the next steps. If you are wanting to join with us, great time to do it. We are right here at the 4th of July stuff. So of course, we do two times a year. This right now, we do the same Black Friday offer here. This is kind of Christmas in July. We do that right now. And of course we do it at the end of the year. So great time to get in and join us. And don't forget at the end of the summer, we're no longer doing the bots included in gold. So again, anybody who's getting in right now is also including the infamous lunch bot and the bot pack and the new mystery bot that is coming out will be also included before the end of the summer for all you guys who are in gold. So that's lifetime members. All right, folks, I will catch you guys on the flip side for me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Mod Squad, Quarters, G, and the rest of the gang. Let's send out that big H down. See y'all.